Hi, everyone. We're just about to get started. I do want to let everyone know that there is an option to enable closed captioning. I apparently is it's at the bottom of the screen. So if anybody is having trouble finding that and would like to find it, please um, feel free to unmute yourself and let us know. And I can have somebody that's more tech savvy explain where it is. Otherwise, we're going to get started in just about two minutes. Estamos a punto de empezar. Para las personas que requieran traducción simultánea, les pedimos por favor que levanten la mano. El botón está debajo de la pantalla de Zoom, en donde están las reacciones. Eh, den clic en ese botón y eh, den clic a levantar la mano. Eh, les pedimos que lo hagan para que podamos buscar eh, un espacio para traducir la, la presentación posteriormente. Okay, I think we should go ahead and get started and out of respect for those of you who have been waiting. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being patient as we allow folks to join us for this second short-term rental community meeting on December 4th, December 12th, 2022. I'm just posting here our, what's called a decorum slide, just to remind everybody um, that we do wanna treat each other with respect. And if anyone is not respectful to staff or another participant, there will be um, a warning, unless it's really egregious, and then we would have to remove the person from the meeting immediately. But otherwise, they would be given a warning and asked um, and reminded just to um, keep it civil amongst us. And if there are any questions about that, you can reach out to me directly. I'm Sherry Meads senior planner and my uh, email address is smeads at srcity.org. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. And this is an agenda. This is what you can expect tonight. Um, the timeframes obviously are, are flexible, but the goal here is just to do a brief introduction of the folks on the call. The staff will do a brief presentation and then the meat of the meeting, which is the breakout sessions, where folks will have an opportunity to discuss what they feel is working and what they feel is not working with the current short term rental ordinance, hoping for some solutions based conversation. The after the breakout sessions, there will be a reporting out period where the staff facilitator will bring back to the larger group what they heard within their breakout session. And I'll talk more about breakout sessions and how that's going to work um, as we get closer to that. Joining us on the call tonight, we have Jessica Jones, who's our planning director, Amy Lyle, supervising planner for advanced planning. We have Lou Kirk, our assistant chief building official, and a great bunch of planners, including Susie Murray, Monet Shikali, Suzanne Hartman, Sheila Wolski, Beatriz Guerrero, Nancy Waltering, and Jandon Briscoe. We're also fortunate to have the A team working behind the scenes, creating one of these meetings and facilitating it on the back end is no simple feat. Um, so I want to big, give a big shout out to Michelle Montoya and Kirsten DePerrier, who are uh, manning the controls for us so that we can all hear and see each other and keeping us moving forward. So as we get started, I just want to provide a brief regulatory history of how we got to where we're at in terms of short-term rentals. So in spring 2021, increased frequency and intensity of code enforcement calls related to short-term rentals and the early declaration of fire season led planning staff to elevate the short-term rentals discussion to the Economic Development Subcommittee. In August and September of 2021, staff brought uh, information related to short-term rentals, at which time the subcommittee directed staff to prepare a short-term rentals urgency ordinance for council consideration. As part of the process, even though it was in, done on a very, very short timeline, staff engaged in some community outreach, including the first short-term rental survey, which uh, had more than 2,300 responses to it. Uh, we held a neighborhood 
group meeting in person and then a uh, virtual uh, industry related short term rental meeting. This engagement made it clear that short term rentals were of concern of many residents throughout the city. So in October of 2021, the City Council adopted an ordinance on an urgency basis, adding an entirely new chapter related to short term rentals to the zoning code. This was to establish a regulatory framework for short term rentals. Staff then provided the Economic Development Subcommittee with an update on the short term rental program, including permitting status, enforcement issues, and potential ordinance amendments during a special meeting in May of this year. Longer term ordinance amendments were also discussed. In response, the Economic Development, Economic Development Subcommittee directed staff to um, prepare an ordinance addressing the number of maximum number of non-hosted short-term rental permits to be issued citywide, and to clarify that code enforcement penalties apply to permit holders and operators in good standing. Council also adopted a resolution to establish a short-term rental permit annual renewal fee. So these are the current regulations for short-term rentals. They, in, it, they existing regulations include permit and neighborhood notification requirements, occupancy, parking, noise, and fire and life safety requirements, a prohibition on the hosting of events, and over-concentration regulations, including a 1,000 foot separation between non-hosted short-term rentals, and a maximum of 198 non-hosted short-term rentals allowed citywide. The ordinance also established a code enforcement uh, process and penalty structure. As you can see here, the penalties increase based on the number of violations that, an app, uh, that a short-term rental operator accrues within one year. The first violation is $500. The second violation within one year is $1,000. And then the third violation within a year is a $2,000 fine and, a, and perfect revo permit revocation or the loss of operator in good standing status. And for those of you who don't know what that might mean, operators in good standing were folks that were operating as short-term rental hosts before we had an actual ordinance in place. So they received some um, additional concessions when we wrote the ordinance. They are not subject to the 1,000 foot separation setback and um, some other things. They were allowed to continue advertising while they waited for city approvals and that type of thing. So if somebody was in the pro is in the process and accrues a third violation, then they would lose that operator in good standing status and have to reapply as a new operator, which would then be subject to all of the new operator requirements, including the 1,000 foot setback requirement. And we're also not accepting any new non-hosted short-term rental permit applications. We hit the maximum of 198 at this point. So what's next? We have been evaluating the short-term rental ordinance. We've been hearing from folks um, what they feel like is working, what they feel like isn't working, but we want to we want to hear more and we want to take that information and you know, work with staff, work, do research on other jurisdictions, see what's working, and if we need to bring some additional amendments to make the short-term rental ordinance more reflective of what we need for this community. So we're, we set out on a uh, non-urgency type of basis to do a regular ordinance update, which then involves much more community outreach on a, on a longer time frame, which is something that we have been doing for several, several months now, meeting with uh, interested parties, industry folks, neighborhood groups doing um, pop-ups at community events. That will continue throughout um, at least December. And depending where we get with the uh, draft of the ordinance, it could continue through January. The survey that's out now was launched on in September and will be closing on December 18th. So if you haven't had a chance to take it, please access it on the short-term rentals website and provide your feedback in that way as well. So after community engagement, we plan to prepare a update and progress report for the economic development subcommittee, which will be January 10th next year. So right around the corner. 
And then after that, we'll get down to the real business of, you know, taking their direction and what we've heard from the community and preparing an ordinance to bring to the Planning Commission at a public hearing. So another opportunity to share feedback. And that will be in sometime in spring. We're thinking March, April. And after that, taking the Planning Commission's feedback, we will then go to the City Council, hopefully by late spring of 2023, to um, to have them review and adopt any potential ordinances. And so far, I will say that the survey that's out now, we've got 1,624 survey results as of today. So we're a little behind last time, but that's still a really good result. So if any of you, you know, have not had a chance, please do take it. And also, if you have any ideas of other ways that we can reach the community and hear from folks that maybe don't participate in traditional um, city you know, type of community meetings that maybe we're not even reaching by the pop-ups that we do at, you know, grocery stores or community events, please reach out and let us know. Or if also, if you have a group or just a couple of you want city staff, you know, to sit down and listen to you in a, in a you know, more intimate forum than this will provide, again, please reach out and let us know. Um, we're happy to do that. The goal this time is to, to definitely hear from people and and do the best we can. Um, so that brings us to our the meat of the meeting. As I've said, this is a time where we're going to break folks up into groups. There will be a staff facilitator in each of the groups. The staff is not there to answer questions, to you know provide feedback, any of that. The staff member is there to record the record the sessions and take notes. Um, and, and just make sure that everybody is having a chance to be able to express their opinion. Some folks, you know, are very outgoing and, and can, can eat up a lot of time themselves, but we have 45 minutes and depending on the size of each group, you know, we want to make sure everyone has a, a good chance to, to talk. And there, you know, there are two questions here that, that we're throwing out there as options and, and they're open-ended. But really what we're hoping is just solutions that you guys would like to hear, would like to see, that type of thing. We also have questions from the survey that if the conversation stalls, the staff facilitator can ask those more specific questions. But this is your time. This is your time to have our ear. At the end of the breakout sessions, then the staff facilitator will bring back to the larger group information that they heard um, that they can share with the rest of the group. And if that report back doesn't capture everything. Don't worry. I get copies of all the notes. Um, sometimes when we're trying to write and type and that type of thing, we're not as able to capture as much as we would like. But in the after effect, we end up writing all the stuff that we that we didn't, you know, get to write down. All that comes back to me. So um, we can't recreate each of the breakout rooms in the report out. So we'll just be hitting, you know, some of the high level um, important details. So if anybody is on the call now and they find that they're not able to, you know, have their microphone work, it could be a matter of Zoom not being updated, but rather than, you know, becoming frustrated, we ask that you just call in. And so I'm going to say that I'm going to read off the phone number, which is now available also on the um, slide here. So you may want to write it down, even if you think you're set, since we weren't able to test everybody's microphone. Um, you'd want to call in 877-853-5257, and that's toll free. And then you'll be asked for a meeting ID number. And this meeting's ID number is 822-5691-0865. So again, if you find that you cannot use your microphone or if you don't have a microphone with your computer, feel free to dial in and it's it's okay, we'll let you in. Um, so with that, I think that we are ready to break out into our breakout rooms, unless any of my other colleagues have anything they would like to add before we do so. We are oh, ready I to send you out into your breakout rooms. Thanks, Dean. Sure, I, I, do, I saw a hand raised. Oh. Well, if the person needs to ask now versus in the breakout room, let's go ahead and unmute. So my name is Skanda and uh, just a question because this, um, the question seemed the same as last time. 
when we had uh, our breakout session in November uh, doesn't seem very different. Um, and um, what's what's the intent here? Because um, I'm seeing I'm seeing that uh, the city has uh, you know imposed um, uh, restrictions, mainly restrictions, um, nothing really to um, enhance uh, short-term rentals and uh, draconic uh, punishment rules. Uh, Okay. Permits, I, have been, permits have been restricted. I'm going to ask same. you to stop right there. So this meeting is a second of the of the community meeting. Okay. It wasn't intended to be different, but it can be. In your breakout session, you can talk about whatever you would like to talk about. Um, again, there there is a list of questions. If there if you don't have you know just open information you would like to share, but it, we're trying to look for solutions. So. If you have solutions to what it is that you are not seeing that you would like to see, please use use the time in the breakout room. Um, yes, you can vent if you would like, but it, it would be more effective and more beneficial in terms of seeing how things move forward if you can also provide solutions. I th what I'm trying to say is that it has to be two-sided, not just one-sided. That's that's Absolutely. what I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Great. All right, so I'm, I'm fine with talking about this but then if I come back next time and it's still the same and, and nothing other than just a little bit of fine tuning about what is there, that is what I'm worried about. Okay, thank you. I'm sending everyone to their breakout rooms now. Great, thank you so much. So, uh... I have to apologize for my team. I hit that button and I ended, but I'll give my summary again during our um, my my you know my download. So I apologize, folks. Everyone's coming out of their breakout rooms, and the meeting will commence shortly. Wow. This meeting is being recorded. How do you think I did? Hmm? How do you think I did? Oh. Hi, everybody. We're back. Is everybody back? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Then no longer do we need to sit and look at each other. Let's get right to it. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to have um, folks report back the, the facilitator, the staff facilitator from each group. We'll just give a, a brief synopsis of what they heard, high level points. Again, please don't expect your staff facilitator to remember everything that was said. I know I won't but I do, or I won't be able to report it back off the top of my head, but I have a page for each person that spoke. And I take this very seriously and I know my colleagues do as well. So this is more just a, you know, just so other other people that were in other groups have an idea of, you know, what, what was discussed.